at CVS. We're gonna do some skincare on a budget. Hi my beauties, so many of you have asked me to do a video on anti-aging skincare on a budget or a budget anti-aging skincare routine. I know that some of us are on a budget and although I talk about a lot of different laser procedures and in office procedures, there's different things that we could do if we want to optimize the best skincare on a budget. It's gonna be a fun day and I'll answer some of your other questions that you guys have been asking in the comment section and as a bonus, I'll take you into CVS with me and go over some products that I feel that are a great substitution for some of the med more medical grade skincare products if you're on a budget. This is for Sarah6043. She asked if my pre and post workout skincare routine is different, and it is. I'm answering this question right after taking an amazing spin class. I just want to work out with clean skin, right? If you work out and your skin vasodilates and your pores open up and you perspire and you sweat, you don't want to have clogged pores or increased inflammation from things sitting on your skin. Dirt, oil, makeup, debris, sebum, all the things. So you want to wash your face before working out, but then also you want to wash it afterwards because you don't want to walk around with all that sweat and perspiration and sebum on your skin. I usually work out in the morning. So I'll do my pre-workout regimen. Before working out, I'll wash my face, I put on a hydrator, and then I'll put on an eye serum, and then I usually use a sunscreen. Even if the sun isn't out, sometimes I wake up at five in the morning and it's still dark out, but I always wear sunscreen because you know there's fluorescent lights in the gym, there's environmental pollutants um, that can break down collagen and cause premature aging. There's also blue light emitted from our device and our phone so I always wear sunscreen when working out even if it's at night or even if it's so early in the morning the sun's not out then I go home like right now I'm so sweaty I'm gonna go home and jump in the shower and wash my face and do my full skincare regimen but that's kind of like my pre and post workout skin regimen my post workout skin regimen cleanse my skin I use my vitamin C and then a hydrator and then a retinol and then my eye serum and then I put on my neck and decollete my neck tight for that skin and then I put my sunscreen on so it's a little bit more involved but yours doesn't have to be as long as you're washing your face before and after working out and if you wanted your full skincare regimen both times you can but I just don't want to waste products so but I need to get home and shower okay so now we're at CVS and we have to come in and pick a few things I'm with my little mini and we're gonna do some skincare on a budget so if there's a problem with getting certain skincare products because of budget limitations here are some things that you can substitute that are pretty good so for body you guys I actually use the Cetaphil cream and I usually mix a little bit of tretinoin with this and I use it on my arms my legs my abdomen and when I, when I get out of the shower I'll mix like, like a dollop of this um, Cetaphil cream and then I put in like a dime sized tretinoin and I mix it in the palms of my hands and I apply it to my skin on my arms my legs and my abdomen the last time I was in CVS like this I actually got kicked out so hopefully we don't get kicked out and this was actually several years ago when I was in my 30s and I actually look a lot more haggard than I do now since then I've had thread lifts energy based devices and lasers and when I was last here doing like a YouTube kind of review of drugstore skincare I was in my 30s and I leave those videos up so you could refer to them and see the improvement in aging backwards so for acne I really like this clear pore Neutrogena benzoyl peroxide I think it's like a weird percent it's like a 3.5 percent you never want to use a benzoyl peroxide that's like 10 percent because that's usually for like chest and back acne way too strong for the face this one for acne prone skin is really really good but be careful because it could bleach your towels and your sheets in your clothes. If you guys are vitamin A derivative or retinol, instead of using like a retinol or medical grade, if you can't afford a medical grade retinol, I really like this Adapalene Differin Gel because it used to be prescription actually back in the day. Adapalene is a vitamin A derivative in the same family as retinoin. This is actually really great for comedonal acne, but it also has powerful anti-aging effects. And if you're on a budget, I recommend this not only for anti-aging, but also it's great for acne too. Another good body moisturizer, for anti-aging as well is um, the amlactin. I can't find it here, but amlactin is another really good one. If you want to go medical grade, you can do like Elastin Transform or one of the more pricey medical grade skincare products for the body. But if you're on a budget, and even if you're not on a budget because it's such a wide surface area and skin that's not on your face, neck and chest, sometimes it's just easier to use like a little bit of tread mixed in with some Cetaphil cream. For people who just can't really afford an eye serum, just using like plain old Vaseline or Aquaphor around your eyes or under your eyes is actually really beneficial so just using a little bit of aquaphor around your eyes at bedtime it's also great for like chapped lips and cracked heels and cracked hands for around your eyes especially starting at a younger age if you're on a budget i'd recommend you just straight up aquaphor or vaseline you don't even need an eye serum not even one of these neutrogena retinol containing eye serums i'm not a big proponent of retinol for under eye serums now when these makeup wipes are terrible stay away from these these are like no good hoping that i don't 
it gets hot of here. Where's the amlactin? I wanted to show you guys amlactin. For those of you who have cracky, dry elbows and knees, this CeraVe that's for psoriasis is actually really, really good. It's a salicylic acid 2%. It needs to stay away from these like facial masks with all these fragrances all this marketing, all these things that really don't do anything at all. Just stay away from these. Oh my gosh, you guys, steer clear of the St. Ives acne control scrub. This is like so old school. It sucked then and it sucked now. Oh my gosh, these are so bad for you. So these Biore strips, this is like a dermatologist's worst nightmare because these Biore strips, when you peel them off your skin, cause a bunch of like broken capillaries and telangiectasias. And people come in all the time to my office for me to V-beam them because they have these broken capillaries, especially around their nose from Biore strips. If you want to save money, saving money on sunscreen is actually really, really important. I really like Ulta MD, but it's a drugstore sunscreen and has a 10% zinc oxide in it. So zinc oxide and titanium dioxide are both mineral-based sunscreens. They reflect, not absorb UV light. And also the most important part is that they block the entire UV spectrum, UVA1, UVA2, and UVA-B rays. Sometimes chemical sunscreens can just be like a piecemeal covering of that UV spectrum. That's why you need so many active ingredients. When you're looking at a chemical sunscreen, it's not just one, it's like avobenzone, oxybenzone, and there's like a bunch of other listed in there because they're just getting like pieces of the UV spectrum, whereas zinc oxide just covers the entire spectrum. All you can have is just a zinc oxide as the single active ingredient in a sunscreen and it'll be effective. So I'm a proponent of it. Even being a skin cancer surgeon and specialist, I've always been a big proponent of zinc oxide for sunscreen and you want a 7% or higher. This is one of the best actual um, sunscreens that's available like a drugstore and the um, zinc oxide is a 10% and I really love Elta MD. I love the also the UV Sport and I think there's another one that's like a clear. Also um, let's see here the different um, adapalene or is it the different adapalene gel? that is um, a 1.1%. This used to be prescription strength only, and the fact that now they have it um, available without a prescription is actually really cool, but it's a really impactful vitamin A derivative. Oh my gosh, stay away from Biore strips. These cause telangiectasias and broken capillaries. Stay away from the St. Ives acne control scrub, and always just stay away from any vitamin C anything in any drugstore because to formulate a vitamin C that's effective takes a lot of work and technology and usually if it doesn't contain L-ascorbic acid it's not good in the first place and it's not going to do anything but just sit on the skin and do nothing and if it doesn't contain L-ascorbic it's not effective. I really like this clear pour. Um, it can be used as a cleanser or a mask. It can be used as a cleanser or a mask and it has a 3.5% benzoyl peroxide. You never want to use a benzoyl peroxide that's more than um, 5%. Usually like a 10% is usually engineered for um, acne on the back and the chest. I love the Cetaphil moisturizing cream. So I actually use this um, in the evenings after I take a shower and um, yeah, the Cetaphil is a great one to use for like the body. I usually mix mine with a little 0.05% um, tretinoin. And I'll take like a little like quarter sized amount of this and like a little dime sized amount of the tretinoin and I use it on my um, skin on my arms and legs and abdomen too. I really like the Cetaphil, like this daily facial cleanser. I think this is legit. And if you're just looking for a everyday cleanser, I think that's a good buy. You ready to go? Of course, she's in the candy aisle. Do you have pina colada gum? Like, uh, pina colada. So kids are just in bed right now, but look at our little Christmas lights and our Christmas tree. People are probably watching this in July when it's not Christmas, but. Honestly, you guys, one of the best things that you can do that's free for optimizing your skin and skincare is drinking your water and exercising. So we all know that drinking our water, our hydration status, whether it comes from our hydrators that we use on our skin or drinking lots of water, hydrated skin is healthy skin and drinking water has a huge impact on your skin and it's free. And I can even tell by one pass of the laser over um, a patient and their skin, how hydrated their skin is, how intact their barrier is, and how hydrated their skin is and that comes from not only that the products that they're using but it also comes from you know hydration that they're getting within are they drinking their two liters of water a day 
so hydration and working out are really really important for overall skin i know you've heard it a thousand times but i can't say that enough and it's free um, working out decreases um, toxins it increases lymphatic drainage of our skin cells it increases blood flow which provides nutrients to the skin antioxidants to the skin and increases cellular turnover and cellular renewal in a really healthy manner and it also decreases cortisol levels, which is really important for the skin because cortisol level spikes can cause premature aging, increase in matrix metalloproteinases, which are enzymes that break down collagen. So exercise is good because it decreases our cortisol levels. Okay guys, I wanted to touch on one more thing. When you're talking about medical grade skincare or skincare on a budget, it's important to know what the most prominent ailment that you're trying to correct. Is the predominant feature melasma? Is it anti-aging? Is it the under eye area? And target that and maybe buy a medical grade skincare product for that ailment. For example, if um, you have melasma, you'd wanna use a vitamin C. If you have textured skin, that's the predominant feature of your face or you have large pores, you'd want to use a retinol. If dryness or sensitization is your predominant feature, you'd want to use like a hydrator. Or if the under eye area is the under eye, then you spend your money on one medical grade skincare product that's going to target the predominant feature that you're trying to reverse or correct. And then everything else you can kind of filter in with store-bought products from like drugstore. The one thing you can't get in a drugstore though, I won't let you guys do is a vitamin C because there has to be so much engineering and technology. The vehicle delivery systems are so important in a vitamin C formulation that that's not one you're going to get in a drugstore. So you probably would want to get like a medical grade. This vitamin C is micro encapsulated. It's in a vehicle delivery system that allows it to remain stable. Half the products on the market get oxidized if they're, you know, not in an airtight chamber. And if they're not stabilized with certain technology, liposomal delivery and vehicle delivery systems that allow the product to stay protected until it gets to where it needs to go to have the effect. And then it allows the efficacy to just be 100% instead of 0.03%. And running assays and doing this for a really long time, you know, I just really put a lot of thought into developing the skincare line. And so I've learned a lot along my 20 years of, of school and education and training in this. But then when I look at CVS and I see some vitamin C that's in a dropper and it doesn't even contain l ascorbic acid and it's $10. So there's no way that it's going to have the vehicle delivery systems and the innovation and the technology to even make it make a difference. And you'll see when you use a skincare product and you've been using it for two weeks and you don't notice a difference, it's not doing anything. You'll see within days of use when you're using like MDR or a medical grade skincare product with a lot of innovation of technology in it, you'll notice the results within like days that the products speak for themselves. So what I was going back to is if you're treating melasma and you have vitamin C, spend the money on a medical grade vitamin C but then maybe get your retinol from CVS. You can get like different adapalene that we talked about or your sunscreen you don't have to spend a lot of money on. All you need is a good zinc oxide. You can get Ulta MD or any zinc oxide containing sunscreen that's 7% or higher. Things like that. You can use Aquaphor on your eyes. So you want to target the most predominant factor and maybe get medical grade skincare for that and then kind of substitute other drugstore purchased products instead. Or if you can't get any medical grade skincare, then drink your water, exercise regularly, and get the CVS or drugstore or Amazon or wherever you get your skincare products on a budget and just stick with that, but at least drink your water and exercise. Okay guys, thank you for hanging out with me. It's time for bed. Thank you guys so much for um, spending a day with me. I really love this vlog style format because I feel like we're just hanging out and you guys have such great questions and I hear you and I see you and I can answer your questions. Um, so just be sure to subscribe and share this video or this channel with anyone who wants non-sponsored content by a board certified dermatologist. And also don't forget that all of my subscribers on my YouTube channel are entered to win a giveaway and you're eligible to win a free MDR skincare product in our once a month giveaway. So this is only applicable to my my YouTube subscribers so if anything subscribe for that and um, let's keep propagating and moving forward with this non-sponsored content and I'm gonna always be honest and true with you guys backed by science education and just truth so I really appreciate you guys thank you so much and I love you